There's been a lot of questions about Briggs & Stratton since they filed for bankruptcy in 2020. Well, a lot has happened since 2020. I mean, for instance, such as we've removed our masks. And now it's time to remove the masks off of Briggs & Stratton and find out what has happened since news broke in July of 2020 of their bankruptcy. First, I want to go through some of the recent company acquisitions by Briggs & Stratton since 2003. And the reason why I want to do this, there's been a lot of questions about this. So uh, this information came straight from the Briggs & Stratton webpage. So in 2003, they acquired Snapper and Ferris. And uh, in 2004, they acquired Simplicity. These, well, Snapper and Simplicity, and as well as in 2005, they acquired Murray. In the U.S., we know these brands, Snapper, Simplicity, Murray. They are, uh, they are residential product lines. Ferris is a commercial product line, basically doing the same thing. In 2008, they acquired Victa. Again, this is a residential mower product line. This is from Australia. So in 2012, they... They acquired the Bronco, Bronco uh, which is a job site products company. And in 2014, the Almond Company, which is another job site product company. I have actually seen Almond products out there. But in 2015, this was one of the big acquisitions. They acquired Billy Goat. I mean, that's an old company that is well established. I mean, established 1967. They're not as old as Simplicity and, you know, Snapper and Ferris, but or Murray even, but it's a very well-known company with a special niche. And one of the th acquisitions that they got in 2015 with Billy Goat was Plugger, because Plugger was acquired by Billy Goat prior to 2015. In 2020, Briggs & Stratton went into bankruptcy, and in 2021, they bought up ASI and the Simplify company. I want to give you more on those companies later, but now let's get back into the history to September of 2020, where a lot of stuff gets revealed. That's when KPS Capital bought Briggs & Stratton. I know you probably have no clue who KPS Capital is, neither did I when I started this journey. But to give you an idea, just so you know right now, they are a global private equity firm. So what happened in a nutshell when KPS, what happened in a nutshell with all of this? KPS Capital went to court and so did Briggs and Stratton. They stood in front of a judge and KPS Capital went in front of the judge and said, we want to buy Briggs and Stratton. Here's how much we're offering. And Briggs and Stratton said, we want to be purchased by KPS Capital by what they're offering. The judge then looks at what they're offering and says, okay, with the debt and everything out, we can work with this, you know, with the current debtors so that we can pay off those debtors. And so I approve this purchase. And we'll use the money to pay off the debt from the bankruptcy. Judge approves the sale. And with the stroke of a gavel, KPS Capital was the new owner of Briggs & Stratton. And Briggs & Stratton was out of bankruptcy. This is kind of really important because you have to understand that with bankruptcy, it doesn't mean that it's a debt negotiation tool. It doesn't mean that a company is going to go out of business. It doesn't necessarily even mean that a company is going to get sold off. But it's a debt negotiating tool. It's basically they're going to the courts and saying, hey, we can't pay off our debts and we need some help. And the court can say, okay, we'll give you seven cents on, or we'll give you, you know, seven cents for every 10 cents or, you know, every 80 cents on the dollar or something like that from the court to pay off the debtors. And you have this much time to pay it off. And when that's paid off, then they're out of bankruptcy. So bankruptcy, bankruptcy can last a very long time or it could be, in this case, was a very short time only a couple months. So now the first order of business by KPS was to fire CEO Todd Teske. Uh, so he was CEO since 2010 for Briggs & Stratton. And Briggs & Stratton reported in a press release on October 27, 2020, they replaced him with Steve Andrews, who was the former CEO to International Equipment Solutions, LLC. This was a company that was developed by KPS. They created this company, and Andrews led the formation of this company. Basically, this company was created to purchase other companies. And they purchased these other companies to form this new company. And what this new company did is they developed operator cabs and attachments for construction equipment, such as buckets and hydraulic attachments. Uh, they basically bought a bunch of companies that most people have never heard of, probably because buying a bucket for a skid steer isn't really sexy to most people. But in 2019, 
International Equipment Solutions LLC sold off the attachments portions to Stanley Black & Decker and is now under the Stanley name. International Equipment Solutions LLC still makes operator caps. Now in 2021, the ASI company, what they do, remember when they acquired that, what they do is they make electric motors to run tracked equipments. Briggs & Stratton actually purchased a minority stake in that company. So they really don't get a lot of say. What happens with that company was probably some kind of business deal. They got part. They had to buy part into it, but they don't have a majority stake. And I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of... Uh, I'm sure there's some kind of business agreement involved with that. But in a press release dated on July 2021, 20, President and CEO Steve Andrews said about this, about this minority stake that they purchased. This is... An important technology investment for Briggs & Stratton as we continue to expand our capabilities as a power application company. This acquisition provides meaningful capabilities that will significantly accelerate our electrification strategy. This quote is something you need to remember. In March of 2021, Briggs & Stratton bragged about their standby generators production. This is important. March of 2021, because in September 7th of 2021, they announced the acquisition of Simplify. They are a solar storage battery company. These two things go hand in hand. So now that we're all caught up, what I want to do is I want to ask you, if you haven't already, hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that. You do not want to upset the YouTube algorithm. Trust me on this one. So make sure you hit the like and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It's time to take out my crystal ball now. What do you think the future of Briggs & Stratton holds? I'm going to tell you what I think. Andrew's quote in a reference to ASI is actually very telling. They have an electrification strategy. Simplify, I think, is going to be the center of that strategy. It's a battery company. It wouldn't surprise me now with the natural progression of things if Briggs and Stratton bought a solar panel company or a wind turbine company or maybe an inverter company. But these these are companies that are traditionally started. I mean, typically the solar panel and the wind turbine companies are typically started by engineers and not people who have a lot of business savvy knowledge. And they typically kind of go belly up. So it is going to be an opportunity for Briggs and Stratton to come in there, swoop up the company, purchase the company and start running that company as a business and bring all the tech and the production and everything else with it and then build that company up. I mean, that is a logical progression with Simplify. But Simplify, I think, is going to be a very huge key to the future of Briggs & Stratton. So with a share of the markets in construction and lawn care and the ongoing electrification of those two industries, Briggs & Stratton is actually poising themselves to be a leader in those two markets. Um. I would start looking at the Vanguard battery line to see what happens. One of the big things that Toro actually said about their Revolution line when they first came out, that's their battery line, mower line. They are a mower company, not a battery company. When I test drove the Revolution grandstand at the Equip Expo, uh, I definitely that idea definitely showed through. The drive system seemed weak, and it kept throwing faults in my little 30-second, what was supposed to be a 30-second test run. I kept having to shut it off and turn it back on because of the faults for traction. Though the mower seemed really sturdy, uh, anybody who understands battery equipment, the equipment is only going to be as strong as the battery system. That is why power tool companies like Milwaukee, Makita, and DeWalt are putting out the best products technically right now as far as battery. Because uh, they've been in the battery game since the 80s. They are technically tool battery companies now. Simplify can begin to equal out the playing field for Briggs & Stratton. And their company can, can begin to become a leader in the battery equipment market. Also keep in mind they are owned by KPS Capital, which is a private equity firm. Private equity firms are not known for keeping companies for a very long time. They basically look to buy them low, build them up, sell them high. Um, they want to make them profitable, and then they'll sell it in parts or in whole. So if a part doesn't seem to go into what they see, deem the future of Briggs & Stratton is, 
they can sell it off to another brand. So it's possible that like a brand like Billy Goat or Murray could be bought by Toro, Bobcat, or a number of other companies. And there might be companies that you've never heard of, some of them who might just want to try to get into that industry that aren't currently in that industry. But they could purchase just part of that, or they could purchase the whole of Briggs & Stratton. I mean, that's also a, a, a possibility. But this is the thing. KPS Capital has not shown any signs yet of selling Briggs or Stratton in its entirety or in its parts just quite yet. They seem to just be developing the company further, and they seem to be moving now into more of this solar battery idea. And I think that they're going to bring those ideas, especially those batteries, into what they already have existing. So I think the big two takeaways from these predictions that I would tell you is I think you need to look and see what Briggs & Stratton's next acquisition is going to be. And to keep an eye on the Vanguard line of batteries and to see what developments happen in there. This is Mike from This Old Relic, and I'll see you next time.